Without a doubt, the most iconic thing about the Railway series is the illustrations. When reading the stories for themselves, more often than not, kids would have their eyes immediately drawn to the pictures, and when a child sees pictures as good as this in front of them, it's clear to see why. So join me today as we take a look at the lives of the illustrators. Our story begins in Leicester of 1904 with the birth of Clarence Reginald Dalby. Dalby didn't like his first name, so he would instead use his middle name. Reginald went to the Leicester College of Art and won a scholarship at the age of 13. After he left, he would spend the next five years working for Victor Ward as a commercial designer producing various designs of packaging, and he even had the privilege of painting the first Glacier Mint polo bear for foxes, which, coincidentally, was a company based in Leicester. With the outbreak of the Second World War, Dolby served as an intelligence officer for the RAF under MI9. In such, he was responsible for planning out escape and evasion methods commonly used by air crews who bailed out behind enemy lines. When the war ended, he was offered an intelligence post with Earl Mountbatten in India, however turned it down due to him wanting to get back into art. But with little to no open roles in commercial art, he didn't have much luck. He had no other choice but to accept a job in Sheffield with the Blood Transfusion Service where he would work for six months before going back to Leicester looking for work as a freelance artist once again. Finally, in 1948, an opportunity arose as Dolby would come into contact with publisher Edmund Ward and they would first meet in Leicester's Royal Hotel. There, Ward showed Dolby Audrey's rough sketches for the third book of his railway series, James the Red Engine, and was asked to turn them into completed illustrations. Despite accepting the role, both illustrator and author didn't see eye to eye, as Wilbert wanted accuracy in his drawings which, to him, Dolby's drawings simply lacked. He made various mistakes in his illustrations which resulted in multiple confused readers writing in questioning these errors in which Audrey was forced to write back to them with some sort of explanation. Despite all of this, Dolby was kept on and illustrated 9 books of the series and redid original illustrations for books 1 and 2. In 1956, Dolby finally left the series after Audrey criticised his depictions of Percy. After he left, he continued his commercial work and, in 1955, wrote and illustrated a children's book of his own called Tales of Flitterwick Harbour. Dolby had a love for people and places and soon drove to the Costa Blanca in Spain. What started as a six-week trip became a three-year stay. He would later find himself falling in love with Greece and went on to make many drawings and paintings of it as well as France and Spain. In 1983, C. Reginald Dolby passed away after a short illness at the age of 79. Our next story brings us back to Leicester with the birth of John Theodore Eardley Kenny on the 16th of May 1911. Like Dolby before him, John trained at the Leicester College of Art. When he left, he would find himself working for local firm J. E. Slater in commercial art. During the Second World War, Kenny served with the 121st Light AA Regiment and during this time made several recorded drawings of the 1944 D-Day landings along with the following sweep across Europe. The war soon ended and Kenny returned to working with Slater. This was when he would first meet a lady named Peggy who would become his future wife. Throughout his career as a commercial artist, John started to establish himself as an illustrator for several books and even illustrated some he wrote himself. Published by Edmund Ward, these books were titled The Grey Pony and The Shetland Pony in 1954 and 1955 respectively. Two years later, John would suffer from ill health and as a result, stepped down in commercial art and instead became a freelance artist. Throughout this time, Ward commissioned Kenny to illustrate an adventure series called Hunter Hawk Skyway Detective before eventually being asked to illustrate the 12th book of the railway series, The Eight Famous Engines. Fortunately for Wilbert, his relationship with John was a happy one, as Kenny delivered the realism that Audrey wanted. Unlike Dalby, Kenny showed a lot more interest in the role as illustrator and was, in Audrey's words, as different from him as chalk and cheese. What's more is that Kenny was more consistent and far less mistakes were made throughout. Sadly, it wasn't to last, with John only illustrating six books in the series before stepping down due to suffering from poor eyesight. It is also worth noting that Kenny illustrated 27 ladybook titles throughout his career. 
Eventually, he lost sight in one eye, and during an exhibition in Chicago of his paintings, John T. Kenny died at the age of 61 on the 27th of November 1972. He was honoured a green plaque by the Leicester County Council on the 13th of June 2019. Now we leave Leicester and move to London where Peter Edwards is born in 1934 before being evacuated to Devon and North Wales during the war. He was educated at Quinton School and, in 1950, began illustration studying at Regent Street Polytechnic where he fell in love with Swedish artist Gunvor Odvan. Gunvor had come to Britain after working on set designs for the Royal Opera in Stockholm for a year. At the end of their studies, Peter entered national service and Gunvor returned to Sweden. In 1956, Peter moved to Sweden with Governor and were married the following year. With them both returning to London in 1958, one of Peter's earliest books was The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins and one of Governor's being Whistled Down the Wind by Mary Haley Bell. Gunvor would go on to illustrate several books in her time, including some of her own titled Cat Samson and Grandmother's Donkey. In 1963, she was approached by Railway Series editor Eric Marriott to illustrate book number 18 of the series, Stepney the Bluebell Engine. Due to the paintings needing to be 10 by 6 inches, Gunvor knew this task would be a hard one and turned to Peter for help, who was, in his words, trying to be a serious artist. Now, the illustrations look better than ever, and Wilbert was more than satisfied with Peter's work, who, as he put it, obviously had an affection for these characters. They got on like a house on fire, and Edwards would continue to illustrate for the series until Wilbert would find more difficulty with story ideas through the early 70s and would write his last book, Tramway Engines, in 1972. Outside of the Railway series, Peter had illustrated various other children's books including The Great Escape by Monica Dickens, The Dining Room Battle by Compton Mackenzie, and John Wyndham's The Chrysalids and the Trouble with Lycan. He also worked as a mural, portrait and landscape painter throughout his career, as well as a set designer for the Astrid Lindgren Museum in Stockholm and the London Dungeon. In addition, Peter would work with exhibition designer Neil Potter on projects such as the British Pavilion at Expo 85 in Japan, London's Museum of the Moving Image and the Root Zone at the RHS Garden in Whistley. On the 23rd of April 2014, Gunvor Edwards died of dementia at the age of 80 and Peter would die at 83 of cancer on the 3rd of April 2017. Now, I originally wrote the script for this video with the intention on including Clive Spong. But, yeah, there isn't much info about him outside the Railway series. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a load of fun to research and also very interesting to learn more about the illustrators. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Scrapyard Studios and I will see you soon.